day after day, alone on a tank. The man with a foolish grin is having a perfect wank. Yes, look, it's news pasty, and we're in Ukraine again. The Times Radio. Times Radio has got a lot of pictures for a radio uh, show. I I don't trust that it's just radio. I think they're doing more than just radio. But I bet you if you listen to their words, they probably do it so that you don't have to say what's going on on the screen. And they can use it for radio, that's for sure. But they definitely got images here. And we're here again to looking to this wonderful pasty-like news where well, what do we to have here? Well, we have a story. It can feed you a narrative. It's from a video entitled "Russian troops could surrender on massive defensive lines are breached." Ha! Oh, Russian troops could surrender on mass. This is the the uh, air defensive line because Russia's just just any moment now. The cost is going to fall and Russia will fall to the mighty Ukraine. I mean, historically, everybody knows Ukraine is a bigger country than Russia. It's better armed. Uh, what, what do you mean? There's a pasty in my ear and it's saying something to me. He's saying, you're a wanker. Oh, that's not very nice. There is this quite uh, surreal photo um, on the Times website and and also, you know, on social media, the, the lone Ukrainian flag among the rubble of this decimated village. Uh, it makes you wonder how significant this advance is, how much we can actually celebrate. This is amazing. So the video is titled, Russian troops can surrender on massive defensive lines are breached. It starts off with, Look, the Ukrainian flag lying in the rubble of disaster as we all clench our butts and realize the dream is over. What little is left of the land won. Yeah, uh, that flag was actually put there several days ago. They still had to clean up some buildings because uh, apparently there, <clears throat> there were some Russian troops still left there and it's slow going. It's a big celebration because Robotin, the, the town that they just officially declared liberated, is pretty much at the, one of the lines uh, of what's, what's known as the Surovikin line, named after the Russian general. It's a series of trenches and dragon's teeth and anti-tank obstacles uh, that the Ukrainians have finally penetrated uh, through, and it seems is there's a breach, but it's going Right, they can't even get a guy with a working microphone and a good internet connection on there to to talk about it. He's probably nothing. I, the guy, I wonder who the guy who is actually speaking on the video is. Um, Anthony, I think she called him. But it, it's just like not very interesting. Comment. Oh, they have to get past all these things and get into these lines. And, you know, this is warfare. But what are you telling us? You're telling us that, that the other side is going to lose? Yeah, it sounds like, you know... Ukraine's in, in real crap at the moment, isn't it? Have an hard time. It's going to be slow going. Let's not uh, have any illusions. It's going to be slow going. Uh, the Ukrainians don't have air, any kind of air superiority, so they have to go meter by meter, trench by trench, emptying the trench. There's booby traps. There's uh, uh, soldiers still there, and they have to Great. protect Save their everything. flanks as well. So uh, it's a significant breakthrough, uh, but you know, it's going to be slow going. Mm. And is this mm. an indication, I mean, mm. you described there the sort of painstaking mm. centimeter by centimeter, centimeter um, counteroffensive. Um, is there a sense that this is how the counteroffensive is going to go on? Well, it will. Uh, you have to take that as a given. It's going to be slow. That said, at some point, the Russians don't have enough reserves to to plug the holes. At what? Are they really saying this? Are they really trying to act like the Russians don't have enough troops? Russia, historically, should we think about their troops? They don't have enough reserves. Well, they wouldn't be able to call up any more reserves. That's it. They'd be doomed. If, if it was a case where they couldn't call up reserves... They don't have enough reserves. That's why he's trying to. That's the line he's trying to feed you. He just said Russia doesn't have any uh, reserves. Yeah. What was the actual line? 
the Russians don't have enough reserves to to plug the holes. At, and they there's don't a have enough reserves to plug the holes. At some point, a part of the front line, which is vast, I mean, it's more than 600 kilometers uh, long and, and even up to 1,000 ah. if you count the northeastern part. You're talking 600 kilometers to 1,000 kilometers long. And the, at any time, the Russians won't have enough. What about the Ukrainians who have a smaller, significantly smaller army? Are they going to have uh, trouble plugging those holes? Oh, yeah, maybe Russia will have to bring some from the east. <laughs> but, you know, then China could attack. Oh, no, unlikely China's going to attack. What's going to happen? Alaska's going to attack? Don't think so. The Americans don't actually fight wars for themselves. They fight wars in other people's countries at the cost of other people. So it's not going there, is it? Where is it going? Ukraine. Of Ukraine. At some point, if there's a breach, you might God. see Russian troops. Wait a surrender. minute. If there's a breach, Talking you a, might where, see. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Look at this Ukraine. guy. Is and, this guy wearing outside underpants? Do you see that? Look at this guy. No wonder he's got a mask on. Who would want to be seen in this? Has he got outside padding around his, his crotch? Or oh, a bulletproof penis? At some point, if there's a breach, you might you be see Russian troops surrendering en masse. Oh, yeah. So this is the spin. Okay, this is the spin. This is what they got to do. This is what they're going to do. These are the pasties. They're throwing out all of the pasties onto the floor. They're like, look at our mainstream news pasties. This is a terrible situation. It's terrible for Russia. Russia doesn't have enough reservists. They have a really long front line. And at any time, Russian troops might uh, surrender en masse if at a part, uh, just a little bit of that 600 kilometer to 1,000 kilometer line is breached. They'll surrender in mass and they'll hand over Putin. They'll hand over Putin for sure this time. They'll hand over Putin. What's this? What? We're living in an imagination land. We're living in an imaginary land where we wear outside combat diapers. Oh no. The reason why that guy was having to wear combat diapers. Yeah, these things, combat diapers, was because he's shitting himself so completely heavily at the moment because he knows the opposite is true. So what these guys are selling you is actually true on the other side, that the Ukrainian forces know that at any time, one of that part of that 600 to 1,000 kilometer uh, front line could be broken, and in that case, Ukrainian soldiers will surrender en masse. And what you're seeing here in these the, in this downward stage of the Ukrainian war, in the end of the Ukrainian war, in the last periods of the Ukrainian war, where Russia is winning, is the West projecting out what is going to happen to their ally, to the Ukrainians, um, and saying this is going to happen to the Russians. This is just literally they're reading out Ukraine's future. Bits of the uh, army will have to surrender en masse if the defensive lines are breached. Make no mistake about it. They have explosive shit because of that. At some point, if there's a breach, you might see Russian troops surrendering en masse. Oh, I love it. I love it, you might see it. Oh, all of these Russians. No. Oh, you Ukrainians. You came in with your 10 men and we got like a thousand men. And you're like, oh, when we're taking you over, we're like, all right. Notoriously, Russians are notoriously given to surrender, aren't they? Historically, everybody knows the Russians just give up. I mean, Napoleon knew that, didn't he? Napoleon knew that. Before he went to Russia, didn't he? He already knew. He already knew. The Russians will give up. Hitler already knew that, didn't he? He was like, yes, yeah, send in the forces. Russia, notoriously uh, famous for giving up their land and uh, surrendering. That's what Russia do. They surrender en masse. Yeah, that was what was, I, I mean, that's just history, isn't it? That's history. As written by Times Radio. <laughs> and then it would be a, a quick run. Now that the first defensive line has been breached. Oh, wait, wait. I didn't hear that. Then it would be a quick run. 
what does that mean? A quick run. What they would be able to like blitzkrieg into uh, Russia. They're saying that the re- parts of the line will fall. They'll surrender on mass, and then it'll be. A- let's let's hear this. Let's hear this again. This is incredible. If there's a breach. You might see Russian troops surrendering on mass. You might see, and it, yeah. then it would be a, a quick run. Now. Then it would be a quick run. What, a quick run on all of the lines? What, everything? Suddenly, all of the Russian defences would fall. And suddenly, it would be like, Putin would be like, oh, we cannot do this. Look, there's been surrendering en masse, and it's a quick, it's now a quick run. What does that mean? I, I don't know. Let's let's ask you, St. Bolt, what's a quick run? Oh, it's under 10 seconds, that's for sure. <laughs> That's what a quick run is. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm just making this stuff up and I say stuff that sounds good, but I don't really know what's happening. So Russian troops could surrender en masse and then it's a quick run because... The first defensive line has been breached. The second and third defensive lines protecting cities aren't as uh, as densely packed with mines. What? And that so the, once they breach a tiny bit in the lines, the lines won't close up around them and leave the people who have breached the lines in no man's land and no man's territory slowly going through uh mine uh, uh, uh deactivation and clearing. Uh no 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 they they're, they're going to Quick run, quick run in, and now everything's down. They'll just sort out these cities, and Ukraine's won. Well done, Ukraine. But what about the um? You know, I know, I know we've taken about like uh five kilometers here, boss. You know, of the um, of the the front line here. Uh, we've um, the line, the defensive lines broken. We take up like five kilometers, but did they say there was up to a thousand kilometers? What about the other nine hundred ninety-five? Ca- What's what's that behind us? Is that the bear? It's Putin on a bear. Putin's on a bear, everybody. And also the Ukrainians have adjusted. They figured out a way to to detect minefields uh, by uh, with thermal drones. <laughs> They've discovered how to detect minefields with their minds. They're actually mind fields now. They're like, I can tell where the mines are. You can walk out. Walk out. Oh my God, he just died. Oh well, it was obviously I had a a a quick problem with my mind, but now I'm back on to the mind controls. By detecting the heat at night, they've got the cluster ah. munitions sent by the United States, which are uh, very helpful. And of course, of course, of course, hey. Hey, Russia doesn't have any of this. They don't have any of this, do they? They're listing out the positive. Oh, they're, they're armed. They've got things to cover their weapons. They got camouflage. They got camouflage knickers. They have got underwear and bra that's bulletproof, so they can't get shot in the nipples or the knobs. You don't want to be shot in your nipples or your knobs when you're doing this sort of stuff. I can tell you that. Uh, in clearing trenches, and they're also, you know, chipping away at the at the rear, the logistics mm. ammo depot. Uh, are they are they and that's not happening russia's not doing that at all russia uh, how far do you think ukrainians are getting in i mean a, a drone in moscow or something uh what about um something deeper is there anything deeper not a uh, holy hell hope in hell chance ukraine would be smashed if they went w- anywhere near proper russian territory. they're fighting in their own country they're fighting. This is all in their own country. Oh, they, their defensive lines are breached. Oh, and now I've taken back five kilometers of my own country, and now I'm being decimated again. Oh, you cry. What's your What's your sense of, of, of where answer. Russian morale is? Because it must be pretty low. They must be wondering. Oh, what are they trying to beat this? Oh, those Russians. Oh, those Russians. Oh, they must be low. They must be sad. They must be all crying. Papa, bear man, righty. Putin, dude, he's not doing as well. We Russians, we really sad. The Russians, I think, are probably quite fine. What? the hell they're doing there and particularly you know after last week's you know the demise of Prigozhin and and so on the the demise of a a person who the west put up as an idea oh look it's the red of russia russia's gonna fall look he's marching on moscow Prigozhin. oh he's dead 
he's dead. I said this in the Love News party, didn't I? When I was saying, oh, Prigozhin didn't work out. Oh, no, no, it didn't turn out to be nothing. He went to meet some people in, in a city, a couple of politicians, and they hid from him because they didn't want to get involved. And uh, he's probably going to be dead in a month. Ah, guess what? He's dead. Ah, uh, yeah, he got killed. Why? Because he's a fucking idiot. You think that... Putin is going to let that stand. Oh, you stupid people. You stupid people with the, oh, with the, with surely the Russian people are like, oh, you know, oh, you know, oh, we, we thought Putin was going to be gone by now. Then everybody in Russia is uh, nearly almost all are standing looking at the West and looking at the horror show that's happening in Western countries and saying, Putin, please stop these guys from coming anywhere near us. I mean, is there a sense that, that, that the Russians may be losing their appetite for the battle as much as the yeah, is there a sense? Is there a sense? Uh, Can you sense edge, it at all? Or at least have gained Please. the edge in this latest battle. Please tell me you sense it, man of all knowledge, who knows nothing and doesn't seem to talk anything sensible. Please, please tell us. Tell us the Russians are unhappy. Tell us they're sad. Tell us that they're all listening to Tchaikovsky with melancholy. Please tell us. Please. Well, I think that that could be said of the most of the Russian rank and file. They're contract soldiers. Many of them were, were uh, they're not contract soldiers, rather. They were conscripted. And no, oh, uh, this guy is saying that that could be said. Isn't that true for the Ukrainian ranks too? Isn't that what it is? Isn't this what we're talking about? Isn't that warfare? Oh, but they're paid, yeah? Yeah, they paid to go to And what What do they feel? They feel love for the country? Yes, they feel love for the country. Do they think they're going to go home anytime soon? No, they probably get a good turnaround because they got loads of troops. Uh, so they don't particularly want to be there. Uh, then again, you have professional paratroopers that are... Uh, well-trained soldiers. You don't have Wagner anymore, but they're defending now. So it's easier to defend than attack. No, uh, look at those underwear. Sent into... Look at the mobile poop pants. Oh, it's almost like Elon Musk's mum's been selling those Alestra chips around again, but in Ukraine. Oh, we we didn't have much to send you in the way of age, so we sent you these um wow chips by a, was cooked in Alestra fat. Uh, yes, they'll make you shit out of your anus, but shut up. Plan. meat grinder the way they were in Bakhmut. So they're just, they're more or less content to stay in a trench. Uh, and that that's better for morale when you're being constantly sent into a meat grinder in one direction. <laughs> this is better for morale is that they're constantly in a trench, which they've been constantly in the trench for ages. And majority of them, 1,000 kilometers, of them are going to be in trenches. And then your own troops are threatening to shoot you if you decide to retreat. That doesn't do, you know, uh, doesn't do much for morale. But uh, I would suspect that at some point, if there's not much ammunition and there's not much water and food, as some of the prisoners uh, taken by the Ukrainian army have, have admitted to the Ukrainian forces, then you might see uh, a the the lines start to fall apart. Other again, they're fantasizing. They're desperately fantasizing about anything that could go bad for Russia. Anything, but I don't think it's going to happen. Is Otherwise, it? it's going to be a slow meter by meter acquisition, reacquisition of territory. This guy just loves saying meat, meter, meat grinder, meaty, meaty, meat, meat. I think he's the same as me. He fancies grabbing some grub anytime soon. And why not when you're the a Ukrainian greedy journalist? Style. Oh, my God. What a bunch of lies these guys tell, eh? Ah, it's all rhetoric. It's all rhetoric.